a, a, a lot of problem in Harcourt Street, fly tipping in the alleyways, um, general litter problems, um, because Harcourt Street is a main thoroughfare from the takeaways. Um, a lot of um, antisocial behaviour, um, you know, gen general nuisances that, you know, plague a lot of um, areas around, around Birkenhead and, and me and sort of Francis really sort of decided we, we sort of had to try and do something about this. So we started badgering our local councillors, Liz, Kenny, uh, Brian and Julie, Julie most of all, uh, bless you, um, and we sort of, uh, Julie has been sort of quite instrumental in, in sort of uh, helping us coordinate all this, we've got the police together, um, you know, the um, community payback, um, and we all sort of culminated in a, in a community day uh, back in July where we got the, uh, the community connectors came out, police, um, we had um, blood pressure even, testers. Blood sorry, blood pressure testers. Blood pressure blood testers. Blood we even had <laughs> catering, all, all sorts. And, and and what we found, it. what we found is, is when when that sort of all all sort of transpired, it it, it sort of um, sort of all made really got the local community to get involved. People in neighbours who I wouldn't even have thought of would have been involved actually got involved and started. Um, <laughs> Talking to each other and helping and helping clear. Um, Julie organised a load of skips um, and the amount of rubbish. I think it was it three full skips of, of rubbish. Biffa came along, did a massive clean out of the alleyways. We had community payback come and, uh, and clean the uh, clear the alleyways of, of just massive amounts of overgrowth. Um, yeah, so, with the uh, Alligate Keys, but that was a problem. Alli Alligate Keys, yeah. all sorts of wonderful stuff yeah, happening. Yeah. Yeah. We've still got problems, but we, we are, so it, it's ongoing now. We're sort of trying to get the community connect connectors uh, together, um, trying to make links with local, other local projects as well, um, you know, to try and, try and make, um, make it, you know, uh, try and make it a better, better area to live, really. So, yeah. so thank you for, thanks to Liz, thanks to Brian, thanks to Julie for all your hard work and help. Thank, thank you. you. And thanks to you for all your hard work. Thanks to you. And also, we, we took the input in Bloom, George, to see our course street, didn't we? Because uh, Julie had accessed some um, plants and yeah, we got you. free, um, Frankie Nurseries gave yeah. us free plants because one of the residents home one works there. Don't Might think you know mine. the nursery knew, so don't film that. Mine did very well. <laughs> <laughs> I bought um, a one. And Home Bargains gave us about £200 worth yeah. of free planters. Yeah. B&Q, yeah. Liz went to B&Q. Yeah. Brian, we got, we got stuff from Tesco, didn't yeah. we, yeah. to compost you. Yeah. Yes. So it was like a sound journey. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> So the action days have gone really well, and we've had we've had 17 like that action day right across the, uh, the whole constituency, and we focused as well um, some work with the bid team, the business improvement district, to improve areas um, within their area, and they've gone really well. So I think they've I think they've been quite impactful, and um, we get very positive feedback, and it and it does seem to bring um, a lot of residents together with agencies, and it's a really good way of. Um, public health getting going outreaching and the police get intelligence, the fire service can do their smoke alarm testing and it, it all seems to work very well doesn't it so yeah. it's a positive um, day of action. Yeah. 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 Um, one, one last update, the Pathfinder project which um, I think we talked about a little bit in the previous meeting um, has access to further 10k for next year so um, we'll be working with three more schools around early intervention to prevent reoffending. Uh, but we'll ask them to call and do a presentation at the next constituency um, meeting. Good. Um, so I think everything else is tabled in the report, but they're just a couple of highlights to, to focus on. There is one question uh, that John would like to read out. So, yeah, do you want me to... Uh, the, no other questions anybody else wants to ask? Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. Uh, I think it's a question really to uh, George Davis because this is in your cabinet portfolio. Oh, it George, could be and to Phil. George and Phil. Okay. <coughs> Double actor. Okay. Uh, the formula for calculating the minimum annual local housing need on which the lo current local plan consultation is based is published here. There's a, there's a long website address I won't read out just for speed. Yeah. The formula states taking the most recent household projections. On 23rd of January 2017, responsibility for publishing the household projections moved from the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government to the Office of National Statistics, as you can read for yourself in the grey box on this page about the household projections, I'll include another web link. Therefore, the household projection figures recently published by the Office of National Statistics are the most recent household projections and therefore the ones that should be used for the local plan. Could you therefore please answer A, after the publication of the new household projection figures recently by the ONS, where the six-week local plan consultation using the old figures wasn't abandoned, B, why there is a report in the World Globe today of Councillor Phil Davis writing to the Secretary of State for permission, which appears not to be required as the formula refers to the most recent figures, to use the new ONS figures. C, due to the substantial drop in the household projection figures when the review of policies that a legal requirement stemming from the change in household projection figures would be likely to carry it out. And D, whether the review referred to in C will result in a further six week consultation on the local plan using the most recent ONS figures. Thanks. Well, I, I mean, I know we're going to give you a formal written answer, yeah, we'll but, formal but, written. but the, the gist of it is, as you say, John, that the ONS have published revised figures, and um, you do have to get the um, agreement of the government to use the new figures, so we have written to get that permission, and we're awaiting um, a response. I hope we can. Um, we, we do need to do, uh, the, the consultation won't be effective because it's a, it's a, it's a legal part, a requirement as part of the local plan. And particularly now the numbers have been reduced, it actually gives um, elected members more choice uh, because uh, hope, it's our hope that we won't have to um, ideally develop any part of the green belt. If the figure had gone up, we would have had to have done a new consultation because we would have had to identify additional green belt land, but because the numbers come down, it, that's, that's not uh, necessary, so it won't uh, require a new consultation. And, and I think um, just, the, just the final thing to say is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously um, two things have been driving this whole debate from, from the start. One is the headline figure, and it's great news that's come down. Um, uh, there are rumours that the government will um, uh, add... Um, Houses on top of that because the new ONS figures don't get you to the 300,000 that the government wants to build, but we'll, we'll await a response from the Secretary of State. And the other thing, obviously, that we will now also have to do is, is, is even uh, greater um, priority given to hopefully being able to deliver our new um, housing targets through brownfield building on brownfield sites. And we are still awaiting a response from um, a number of key landholders of Brownfield sites, notably Peel Holdings, yes. to make sure we have got the evidence to back up the uh, figure of 6,450 houses on rural waters that they um, say they're going to develop. But that has to be, all this has to be evidence-based because it has to be able to satisfy a government inspector when the local plan is inspected. So um, the consultation process will go on and the aim is still to bring a report to um, uh, Cabinet in December with recommendations. So that's the gist that's of the, the reply you'll get in writing. And so that's coming to you as well, John, from David Paul. Okay. Uh, he's going to respond back to you, okay. just to confirm it. But it, it's exactly what Phil just said. Okay. There's no other public questions. Any other business, please? Steve? George, um, you did give me permission to, to, to raise this issue. Um, the first one, um, just to remind people, if you're interested in the new train fleet, which has been subject of questions in this committee, the new uh, carriages are on show at the Pacific Road, the old museum, Pacific Road uh, Transport Museum. Uh, you want to go and have a look and, and see how great they're going to be in the future then um, please go down and have a look the, the other one we a number of the councillors who represent Lawton and Beck and Herb and uh, Vincent and, yes, and St James Ward just come direct here from a meeting at the Miriam uh, Centre uh, 
Medical Centre in Laird Street there. Um, they are greatly concerned about the consultation that the CCG um, is, is taking and you will have read in the press about you know, the, the threat to um, walking centres across the Whittle. They're gravely concerned that, that the, the, the way the consultation is taken then um, is to look at the closure of the very uh, services that are provided out many hours of hours. Um, we, 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 we've gained enough information to be worried ourselves, I think, as a, and they knew we were coming here, so it would have been remiss of us not to mention it here uh, at, the next, at the first available opportunity. Uh, they have began to raise a, a petition to actually make the uh, consultation people think in a different way. Uh, I've got that. If you think you know enough about the issue to sign a petition, then I'll leave it here before you go. And they are asking people to call in the centre and pick up a letter which they're drafting to either support or not support. It's a democracy that's going on. But they, they, we, we couldn't have left the meeting without reminding those people that, that you know, we were concerned. Uh, and the Berkeley constituency, it looks um, very much as though, from what I gather of the consultation, I'm by no means an expert, that to, to save money and to bolster the activities at Anna Park, a lot more is being drawn back into our park, hospital, and that's leaving the satellite centres that now currently exist more vulnerable. Um, if anywhere, you know, we only have to look at the health figures, if, if anywhere needs some on, on the ground health care, it's the north end of Birkenhead. Um, I, I, I think we should all be aware that this consultation it, it, it does pose a threat, and I hope you know the constituency committee can monitor it as we go on. But certainly, the first thing we promised them at the meeting is that we would raise the issue and raise the public profile of the issue for people to get engaged and involved, and that's the best thing I can do. Is that okay, Chair? Yeah. I, I've also had a letter from Councillor Alan Brown, who's is raising the same issue as well. Okay, okay, well that's with the issue then, that's good. Okay. Anything else? No. Members? No? no. no. Can I thank you all for your contributions tonight? It's been a really good meeting. It's a successful one. Thank you for everything you do and keep the good work. Well done. Thank you.